Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at what purity is and how we can determine if a substance is pure or if it is not pure. Well, the first thing that we really need to understand is what do we mean by the term pure? And a pure substance, very, very simply, is something that is not mixed with anything else. There is only one type of substance in something that's pure. We often use the word pure incorrectly in everyday language. And we need to make sure that when we talk about pure things, we're using the correct chemical terminology. So, first of all, all elements are pure. And an element is pure because they only contain one type of atom. Hydrogen will only contain hydrogen atoms, so it is pure. Nitrogen will only contain nitrogen atoms, so it's pure. Individual compounds are pure. Pure water will only contain H2O molecules and nothing else if it's pure. Sodium chloride, salt, will only contain sodium chloride molecules if they're pure nothing else. So a pure substance only contains one type of substance. We can look at the example of mineral water. When we talk about things that are pure in everyday language, we would say mineral water is pure. But from a chemical point of view, is mineral water, is bottled water actually pure? Well, the answer is no. Mineral water is not pure. And the reason for this is that mineral water contains the following things. It contains H2O, it contains water molecules. But it also contains potassium and calcium and many other dissolved minerals. If we have a look at this little diagram here, we can see a simplified version of why water is not pure. So we've got a bottle of water, some mineral water, and it contains water, it contains potassium, and it contains calcium. There are three different substances in this water. It is not pure. Pure substances only contain one type of substance. Mineral water is what we call a mixture. When there is more than one type of substance that is not chemically joined together and it is not in a fixed ratio. So what do we mean by pure? Well, we can see here we've got some equipment, and this equipment is used for a process called distillation. Distillation is a method of obtaining pure liquids, and we're going to look at how it works in later lessons. But what we need to understand at the moment is a pure substance, as we've already said, is something that's not mixed with anything else. So all elements are pure because they're not mixed. Individual compounds are pure because they're not mixed. But water is only pure if it contains molecules of water and nothing else. So if we pour some mineral water into this container and we heat it, the water molecules will evaporate. The potassium and the calcium and all of the other minerals in there will not evaporate. So we can create pure water by evaporating away the water molecules only and removing all of the impurities from that water. Now, purity can be incredibly important, but not always. So water that we drink is impure, but it doesn't matter as long as it's clean. But things such as medicinal drugs and food additives need to be pure. If there are any impurities in them, then these substances may cause us harm. So any unwanted substances that stop something from being pure are known as impurities. Now we can work out if something's pure through some very simple methods. One of the simplest ways of finding out if something's pure is to check a substance melting point and its boiling point. Pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and melts at 0 degrees Celsius. So they have a definite boiling point and a melting point if they are pure. But if a substance is impure, they might melt and it might boil over a range of temperatures. So if water is impure, it will not necessarily boil at exactly 100 degrees Celsius and it will not melt at exactly 0 degrees Celsius. So impurities reduce the melting point, making it lower, and they increase the boiling point, making it higher. This is why if you live in a cold climate, you might put salt on the roads. 
If it's below zero degrees Celsius, you'd normally expect water to freeze and become icy. This is very dangerous if you're driving. But if you put salt on the roads, you lower the melting point. Water will now freeze at below zero degrees Celsius. This means it can get much colder and the water on the roads will still not freeze, meaning it is safer to drive. Also, if you add salt to water, it will boil at a slightly higher temperature. Impure water boils at above 100 degrees Celsius. One of the simplest ways we can find out if a substance is pure then is to test its melting point and its boiling point. If it does not melt or boil at the expected temperature and it melts and boils over a range of temperatures, then we know it must be impure. Another way we can determine purity is to use a technique called chromatography. Chromatography can separate different colored dyes from their inks. So we can separate colored liquids into all of the different colors that they're made from. It can also be used to identify proteins and amino acids. In order to test for purity using chromatography, we use the following steps. First of all, we add some solvent to a beaker. A solvent is just a liquid that can dissolve another substance. So water and alcohol are very good examples of solvents. We then take a sheet of filter paper and using a pencil, we draw a line at the bottom of the chromatography paper. The reason why we use pencil is because the graphite in the pencil is insoluble. It will not dissolve in our solvent. Then using our pencil, we draw two crosses on the line this is where we're going to mark on the inks that we are going to separate. We then, on our crosses, mark on the inks. We then place our chromatography paper into the solvent. But we need to be really, really careful. The ink should not directly touch the solvent. This is really important. If the ink directly touches the solvent, it's just going to dissolve into that water or into whatever solvent you're using. And the experiment will not work. We then wait for the solvent to move and the solvent will move up the paper. And as it does, our inks will also dissolve and move up the paper. And the different dyes will separate out from each other. We then leave what we call a chromatogram to dry. Now we can see here that when we had a purple ink and a blue ink, they separated out into different dyes. Our purple ink only had one dye within it. So it is a pure substance. Our blue ink on the other hand had a blue and a yellow dye that were part of it. So it is an impure substance because there is more than one substance that makes it up. So this is how we can use chromatography to test for purity. We can also work out what substances we have within our chromatograms by calculating something called an RF value. All different substances have a fixed RF value or retention factor. And we can identify which substances we have in our mixture by calculating their RF value. And it's very, very easy to do. So the RF value is equal to the distance moved by the substance divided by the distance moved by the solvent front. The solvent front is the top of the solvent, how far it's moved up our chromatography paper. So the first thing we do is we measure our solvent front. And in this case, I'm just going to call it A. We then measure the distance moved by the purple dye. And we measure the distance moved by the yellow dye and by the blue dye. And we obviously just use a ruler to measure how far each one has moved. I've taken the center point of the die is where we're going to measure its movement from. And we obviously measure to our pencil line because this is our starting point. We can measure these values and record them in a table. So the first thing we measure is our solvent front and the solvent has moved 88 millimeters. So for all of our calculations, in this example, the solvent front is going to be 88. We then measure the distance moved by die B, so 48. We repeat and we measure for C, 29, and for D, 62 millimeters. So we measure the distance moved by each die and the solvent front. So the equation is very simple. For our purple die, 
48 millimeters, the distance moved, divided by 88 millimeters, our solvent front, equals an RF value of 0 0.55. For the yellow dye, the distance moved 29 millimeters, divided by the solvent front, 88 millimeters, gives us an RF value of 0 0.33. Just note there is no unit for an RF value, it is just a number. Finally, for our blue die, 62 millimeters, the distance moved by the die divided by 88 millimeters, the distance moved by the solvent front gives us an RF value of 0 0.7. Now, it's worth pointing out that RF values must always be lower than one. If you have an RF value greater than one, then you've done something incorrect. The reason why an RF value must be less than 1 is because the dye cannot move further than the solvent. Now there are other types of chromatography as well. Chromatography can be used to identify amino acids and these require a solvent of water, ethanoic acid and butanol all mixed together. Now amino acids are colourless which means we can't actually see how far they've moved. So we need to add another chemical to them called a locating agent. And this makes the amino acids visible so we can see them, we can measure how far they've moved and we can calculate their RF value. Once we have their RF value, we can work out what amino acid we're dealing with. A good example of a locating agent is something called ninhydrin. So, in summary, a pure substance is something that has no other substances mixed with it. Most substances, even drinking water, are impure. Medical drugs and food additives need to be pure in order to be safe. Pure substances have fixed boiling points and melting points. Impure substances have a lower melting point and a higher boiling point than pure substances. And chromatography can be used to identify impurities in substances. And we can use an RF value to identify different substances. Substances that are colourless, such as amino acids, can be identified by using a locating agent. So, I hope you now understand what we mean by purity, and you have some idea about how we can work out if a substance is pure, or if it is not pure. Okay, thank you so much for watching this lesson, I hope you found it really useful. Don't forget to check out our other lessons on YouTube, and if you want to learn even more about science, then you can check out our website, the URL is in the description below. Please give a like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Until next lesson, keep on learning.